welcome to another episode of the history of Mortal Kombat. Last time we covered the history of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and Li Mei, one of Outworld's greatest defenders, from her struggle to save the people of her village, to her alliance with the Dragon King, and her introduction in her new role as a disgraced royal family guardian in the new era. But this time we're going to revisit and update one of the most popular combatants, the first secret character of the series, the Green Cloth Ninja Man, sometimes Lizard Man, sometimes a Ninja Lizard Man. Sizoth, otherwise known as Reptile. And we'll also cover two other characters with very small histories somewhat related to his world, Chameleon and Chameleon, one with a K, one with a C. Before we get started, I'd like to express a huge thank you and shout out to all of my Patreon members for your continued support. You guys make these videos possible and allow the wheels to keep turning. If you'd like to have your name up here too, get exclusive perks like sneak peeks at upcoming content, access to the Discord exclusive channel, and early access to videos, go to patreon.com forward slash GamerThumbTV, or click the link in the description to get started. And with that, I'd like to welcome you to the Mortal Kombat timeline, the history of Reptile, and the Chameleons. <laughs> The era of the well-made fighting game begins. Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat were dominating the fighting game scene at local arcades and soon on home consoles everywhere. And although these titans held the title of showing how it's done, Mortal Kombat was solely responsible for one of the most exciting features a fighting game could have, the secret character, the mysterious foe usually discovered on accident. In today's modern world, the internet has mostly ruined the idea of secret characters. Information and answers are too easy to access with a quick Google search on your phone. What used to be a fun, secret, unlockable character would now be sold as paid downloadable add-ons instead. In the 90s, it was a magical experience encountering a video game secret. Players scrambled to figure out how the secret was uncovered by spying video game magazines and cheat codes, spreading fake BS rumors, telling tall tales of how you found it, causing playground arguments and brawls. And you expect me to believe that? What do I look like? I look like an idiot. Hey, I don't care what you believe. Hey, everybody just calm down. Get him off my land. No, let me tell you something, man. I and the green Mortal Kombat Ninja Reptile was responsible for much of it, but he was actually created after the game's launch. Series co-creators Ed Boon and John Tobias wanted to add in a, a secret fighter the player could encounter, but with the memory limitations of the time, a fully original character with new moves of his own was out of the question. The game already held an answer to the problem though, palette swaps. The infamous Mortal Kombat color changes. Change the colors of a character, mix and match some moves, call him something else. Palette swaps were already used with the creation of Scorpion and Sub-Zero, and the team sought to create a character deemed, and I quote, cooler than Scorpion. The idea was exciting. Mortal Kombat had taken its first steps into rumor baiting the fan community, a troll that would continue for years to come. The secret fight was meant to help market the game further by fueling rumors of his existence within it. The colors of blue and yellow were already used on Sub-Zero and Scorpion, so they were combined, creating a green ninja, hence the name Reptile. You may know Reptile now as a lizard man with a unique skill set of his own, but in his first appearance, his moves were simply a combination of Sub-Zero and Scorpion. He could freeze characters like Sub-Zero and use the same spear as Scorpion, but he was much faster in combat. In a single evening, Reptile was completed, then inserted into Mortal Kombat arcades with the third revision of the arcade board, released in August of 1992. Reptile not only became the first secret character in Mortal Kombat, he was the first secret character created for a versus fighting game. His appearance was total mystery that taunted players. There was no character biography, and he'd appear before matches, leaving hints on how to find him. Now how do all these clues come together? There's some differences with certain home console versions, but in the original arcade appearance, some requirements need to be met. On a single player match on the pit stage, sometimes you'll see a silhouette passing by the moon. The game is programmed to trigger this event once every 50 matches. With those conditions met, you have to win the match with a double flawless victory, without blocking and finishing with a fatality. Once you satisfy those requirements, Reptile will appear to challenge you, and the battle is... it's tough. And mind you, it says Scorpion because they didn't have a Reptile character back then. He was just a green ninja pallet. They didn't know who he was. He whooped my ass. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's Ender Reptile there at least. But he's throwing he's throwing sub zeros moves, throwing ninjas, or scorpions harpoon. He's whooping my ass. There was no chance there. Once Reptile was fully uncovered by the gaming public, his popularity ensured that he would make it to the Mortal Kombat 2 roster as a standard playable character with his own storyline and unique attacks and fatalities. Since then, he's been a staple of Mortal Kombat history, although he has skipped some games. He is considered to be one of the combatants players expect to see in every new entry, and express disappointment when he's not there. And his appearance has evolved from his original, classic ninja appearance to a drastically different lizard man for various story-related reasons. The character of Reptile retained his popularity outside the games too. In the live-action 1995 Mortal Kombat movie, Reptile wasn't even included originally. After focus groups had negative responses from the underwhelming fights in the movie, the script was adjusted to include him. Appearing as a weird, invisible, early CG creature, then strangely enough becomes a man after he somehow fuses with the statue? It's all very bizarre, but to be fair at the time, Reptile's story and appearance weren't really fleshed out yet in the game. In the newer Mortal Kombat live-action representation, they did go with his more modern dinosaur look. And as cool as a character as Reptile is, sadly his legacy has been one of getting the short end of the stick oftentimes. He's usually depicted as a servant or punching bag, always losing to others. Sonya Blade chops his head off in the Scorpion's Revenge animated movie. In the 2021 live-action movie, he gets his heart ripped out by Kano. And he's also had some really strange appearances, like the Mortal Kombat Rebirth short film depicts him as a human cannibal with a skin disease that eats his victims' heads. In the live-action Conquest series, he was selected to mate with an Amazonian queen called Kriya that wants to reproduce with him to include features of his race in them. The Zaterans, Raptors, Saurians, they've gone by various names. And in the Mortal Kombat 90s comic series Battle Wave, he hypnotizes Sonya Blade to marry Shao Kahn. Outside of Mortal Kombat, he has been referenced in another fighter, Skullgirl's Encore, with the character Fakua. She has several color palettes based on outside characters, one of them being Reptile, and it's called Chameleon Twist. And isn't that an old video game? I think there's a game called Chameleon Twist, if I remember correctly. I'll show it here if I'm right. And that's how Reptile came about. Now for another ultra-secret character in Mortal Kombat, Chameleon, with a K. Why is she in a Reptile video, you might ask? Well, this character never received a fully fleshed out story in history like Reptile did, but she is still referenced to this very day and she's also one of the survivors from Reptile's race, though never having appeared in her Reptile form. I sensed a Zaterran. The last Zaterran! No, there is another. Round one, fight! Originally, Chameleon was designed as another palette swap character, modeled after the female ninja body type like Kitana, Melina, and Jade, and she swaps between all of their powers. She wears a standard gray outfit and her visibility flickers in and out, hinting at her connection to Reptile's abilities. Ironically, she is the first Nintendo-exclusive Mortal Kombat character. She exclusively made her first appearance as a secret character in the Nintendo 64 version of Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Sometimes she'd appear randomly before a fight started just like Reptile in the original game to give hints on how to find her. To trigger the battle with Chameleon, you have to be on the Starbridge stage. Once Dan Forden appears at random, the famous Toasty guy, most easily triggered with an uppercut, press down and start together quickly, and you'll be transported to the Living Forest to face Chameleon. She can also be found in the Shao Kahn Rewards for beating the game, box number 18 to be specific, and she is playable by entering a code within the game. Once the story screen appears, you quickly Enter right C, up C, A, B, down C, up C, right C. If it's entered properly, Shao Kahn will say Chameleon's name, and she'll be on the character select screen. She's always been one of the lesser known secrets since she was console exclusive, and that tradition continued with her main appearance in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, where most every main combatant was included. Midway desired to include Chameleon, but time constraints as the game's launch was approaching kept her out of the roster. She almost didn't make it in. Only after a barrage of fan complaints did she become playable exclusively in the Nintendo Wii version of Armageddon. And today in 2024, for the first time, she left console exclusivity behind with Mortal Kombat 1, appearing in the story mode briefly and was added as cameo fighter. 
but she wasn't the only chameleon. There's also a totally different male character with the same name, Chameleon with a C. Male chameleon's connection to reptile is a bit less clear, if there even is any. Virtually nothing's known about his story, besides being described as one of Shao Kahn's deadliest warriors, and he's never specifically stated to be a member of Reptile's race. However, there's a lot of suggestions, his transparent appearance, status as a secret character, and mixed moves falls right in line with the other secret Zorian. And Mortal Kombat co-creator John Tobias has stated that his original idea for Chameleon was to be a member of Reptile's race. In another additional hint that almost undoubtedly places him as a member of the same race, in Mortal Kombat X in a mirror match between Reptile and Reptile, one questions the other of being Chameleon. Chameleon. It is I, Shang Tsung. Show yourself, coward! Although both chameleons made their official appearances in Mortal Kombat Trilogy, male chameleon is technically the older character of the two. In the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis ports of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, he can be found within the game's code as an unfinished character that never made the final roster. Using a Game Genie cheat device or a pro-action replay, he becomes a playable combatant reusing Scorpion Sprite. Though he's got no combos, no special moves, no fatalities, and his versus screen appears covered in a vomit of colors and his pictures on the arcade ladder is just Kano, a very unfinished character indeed. However, by the time of Mortal Kombat Trilogy, he was properly introduced in complete form in the Sega Saturn, PC, and PlayStation versions of the game. Just like Female Chameleon, he was partially transparent and changed into all the ninjas specifically the male counterparts. He can be fought as a reward from Shao Kahn's treasures at the end of the game, box number two. No crazy secret method required this time. And he was also playable with a code. All you gotta do is choose a male ninja, press and hold left, high punch, low punch, run, and block. Keep holding them all down until the match starts and you have a playable chameleon. He would also almost be lost to Mortal Kombat history, also not planned to appear in Armageddon. Due to fan demand, he was ultimately included in all versions of the game, appearing with transparent skin, glowing eyes, and a uniform that shifts colors based on the moves that he's using. His final appearance in the series as of now, and that is the creation of the three secret Saurians. But what are their in-game stories? Where do they come from? What do they want? And how do their tales affect the Mortal Kombat universe as a whole? The story of Reptile and his people begins millions of years ago, a race that went by many names. Some of the earliest were Saurians and Raptors. They were native to Earthrealm, with both reptilian and humanoid features. Some of the species appeared more lizard-like, some appeared more human-like, while others were somewhere in between. For defensive purposes, they had the ability to camouflage themselves and expel acidic fluid from their bodies. During a chaotic era of the universe, the Elder God of Death, Shinnok, betrayed his fellow Elder Gods and attacked the realms. As the war raged on, Raiden and multiple gods struggled to contain Shinnok, and the inhabitants of the realms paid the price. Earthrealm was ravaged, and most of the Saurians perished. Before the war's end, the few survivors were able to escape Earthrealm and migrate into the realm of Zaterra. Not much was known about the realm since these new Zaterans were the only known inhabitants and their civilization was short-lived. They rebuilt their lives and multiplied until Shao Kahn arrived. When the Emperor of Outworld was expanding his empire, he challenged Zaterra to mortal combat. After ten consecutive victories, Shao Kahn annexed Zaterra into Outworld and destroyed its people. The very few survivors were forced into slavery secretly, but one survivor believed that he was the last of his race, the Zaterra named Sizoth, known to those outside of Zaterra as Reptile. Without his people, he was lost, and his existence served no purpose. Until he found purpose as a servant of Outworld's rulers, he bowed down to Shao Kahn's authority and became one of his most reliable servants. Eventually, he was appointed by Shao Kahn to be the evil sorcerer Shang Tsung's personal protector. In Kahn's 10th Mortal Kombat tournament against Earthrealm, Reptile watched from the shadows, enacted as Shang Tsung's guardian against any assassination attempts, and he observed Outworld's loss as Liu Kang defeated Shang Tsung in the final match. <laughs> After
After Shang Tsung returned to Shao Kahn, shamed and defeated, he proposed another tournament in Outworld. Reptile continued receiving special orders in his service to Shao Kahn. He learned that more Zaterans had survived, and Kahn promised to release them from slavery if he joined the tournament and fought for Outworld. Before the beginning of the tournament, the warrior Shijinko was on a quest of his own, unknowingly being manipulated by the previous ruler of Outworld, Onaga the Dragon King. In Outworld, he came across Shao Kahn, who was looking for Reptile, and demanded tribute. You dare approach Shao Kahn, Emperor of Outworld? You will pay dearly for your insolence. Shao Kahn? Damashi warned me of him. I must be cautious. I did not mean any disrespect, Your Eminence. Please allow me to rectify my error. So you shall. The warrior known as Reptile is missing. Find him and inform him that he is to return with my tribute immediately. Complete the task, and I will spare your life. You stand before Reptile, stranger. What is this you say? Shao Kahn demands my return? Ah! I lost his tribute somewhere in this forest. I must inform my master and beg for his mercy. Once Reptile returned and the Earthrealmers arrived in Outworld, Reptile joined and fought against them during the events of Mortal Kombat 2. In the reimagining of the story in Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, he does appear as a boss battle when he's confronted by Liu Kang and Kung Lao. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 2 ending, Reptile discovers a secret plot by Shang Tsung to enslave the remaining Frieza Terrans for Shao Kahn. Then he turns against his masters and defeats them so his race can live on in their own peaceful existence. <laughs> In the canon version of events, Reptile never learned of any secret plot and never turns against Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn. Instead, Liu Kang defeats Kahn, destroying any hopes of the enslaved Zaterans being released. When Shao Kahn recovered, he unleashed his armies in Earthrealm and began stealing human souls in order to take the realm by force. During the invasion, Shao Kahn learned that his adopted daughter Katana betrayed him and allied herself with Raiden and his Earthrealm warriors. He sent her best friend and guardian Jade to find her and bring her back, and ordered Reptile to assist her. In return for a successful capture, Khan promised to resurrect Reptile's fallen race of Zaterans. Reptile's orders were to stop Katana at all costs, even if it meant killing her. In his non-canon Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy ending, Reptile successfully captured and killed Katana, but doesn't find the reward he was promised. When he returned to Shao Kahn, he was shunned. The Emperor of Outworld never had intention of resurrecting the Zaterans. In a fit of rage, Reptile turned against Khan and destroyed him, and there was no hope left that his race would be restored. During Shao Kahn's invasion, the male chameleon was also secretly present, and aiding Shao Kahn's warriors against Earthrealm, as one of his most secretive and deadly warriors, but he has no ending of his own. The female chameleon, on the other hand, also kept her presence secret, but she had been on a quest to find and confront Reptile. She believed herself to be the last Zaterran female left alive and free, and Reptile the last male. In her non-canon Mortal Kombat trilogy ending, she found and confronted Reptile, in the hopes that together, they could restore their race. Then she revealed that Shao Kahn was responsible for the destruction of Zatera and its people, a fact that Reptile was unaware of. Reptile turned on the Emperor, and Chameleon destroyed him in a sneak attack. Earthrealm was saved, and together they would start the repopulation of their race. In the canon version of events, Reptile remained loyal to his master and turned on Chameleon, and she began wandering through the realms, contemplating a way to strike back at Shao Kahn. And Reptile never killed Katana. During the events of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy, Reptile failed to capture her, after Jade also betrayed Shao Kahn and chose to remain by her friend's side. Ultimately, Shao Kahn was defeated by Liu Kang again and sent back to Outworld, almost powerless and weak. After the Earthrealm invasion failed, Reptile was taken to the restored realm of Denia, where Queen Sindel reigned. 
He was taken as a prisoner and tried for genocide in his role as Shao Kahn's servant. But Reptile stood firm against Sindel and expressed how proud he was to have served under his rule. By this point, he was beginning to devolve, losing the ability to hide himself in human form. The Terrans used to be ruled by a matriarch, a queen that would biologically influence the entire race. Once the Terrans are separated from the matriarch for too long, they begin reverting to their original reptile forms. As punishment for his crimes, Sindel banished Reptile to the Netherrealm, where another threat was preparing to show itself. The Elder God of Death, Shinnok, responsible for the war that destroyed the original home of the Zaterans, an Earthrealm, had been imprisoned in the Netherrealm for eons. Shinnok escaped and invaded Edenia with an army of demons and allies of his own. Since Reptile had been banished to the Netherrealm, he was recruited by Shinnok to join his army as a commander. Reptile agreed to join with the hope that Shinnok would agree to resurrect the species. Perhaps an Elder God would do what Shao Kahn refused. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 4 and Gold ending, Reptile pleaded his case to Shinnok and paid the ultimate price for making demands of an Elder God. Quan Chi, I have served our Lord Shinnok well in the destruction of Earth's warriors. Yes, we are most appreciative of your efforts. Now I wish to return in time to my home world before it was destroyed at the hands of Shao Kahn. As the new ruler supreme of all reality, Shinnok alone has the power to grant me this wish. You dare make such an impetuous request from your lord and master? It is a simple request for one of such great power. It is also not worth his attention. I demand it, if it were not for warriors such as myself, his attack against Raiden's forces would have failed. Perhaps you can convey your feelings to Shinnok himself. What? Infidel! You are in no position to demand anything. I could kill you with a mere thought. But we had a deal. A deal? I am not a god of my word, Reptile. All deals are off! In the canon version of events, Reptile fought for Shinnok and attempted to ambush Liu Kang's Shaolin apprentice and close friend, Kai. The Zaterran camouflaged himself and could smell Kai's fear and uncertainty, but Kai's fear wasn't for himself, he feared what would happen to the realms if he failed. Reptile attempted to catch him by surprise, but Kai was ready and Reptile was defeated quickly. After Reptile's defeat, he escaped to Outworld to avoid punishment, while Liu Kang confronted and defeated Shinnok. <laughs> Once he arrived in Outworld, Reptile discovered that Shao Kahn was still alive, yet incredibly weak. With nowhere to go, Reptile became Kahn's servant again, and secretly monitored for any threats to his life. By this time, Reptile's appearance was changing rapidly. Over time, he'd been struggling more and more to maintain his humanoid appearance. The further away Zaterran was from the Matriarch, the quicker they would begin devolving into a more primal lizard-like state. And Reptile had been on his own for as long as he could remember. His biology couldn't hold his humanoid appearance any longer. During the events of Mortal Kombat Deadly, alliance, the evil sorcerers Quan Chi and Shang Tsung formed an alliance. After discovering the ancient and immortal army of Onaga the Dragon King, the previous ruler of Outworld, they planned to power the army with stolen souls, but first they had to remove any possible obstacles in their way. They plotted to find and kill Shao Kahn, but Reptile discovered the plot. He rushed to inform his master of the incoming assassination attempt, but on the way he was distracted by a vampire woman from the realm of Eternus, Mintara. She was seeking help finding a magical orb that could separate Returnus from Outworld, and needed help from the cyborg Cyrax to reach it. She formed a plan to gain Reptile's trust and use him in her plot. In exchange for his loyalty, she revealed the location of Katana's forces, who were fighting against Outworld's armies. Reptile decided to use the information to gain favoritism with Shao Kahn, but the detour with Natara delayed him. When he arrived back in the throne room, he realized he was too late. Shao Kahn had been slain. Unknown to Reptile, the deceased Shao Kahn was simply a clone while the original was safely recovering. He wandered the wastelands of Outworld searching for a purpose and crossed paths with Natara again. In order to continue using Reptile for her own benefit, she presented him with the Kirahashi Blade an artifact from his lost realm of Zatera. Thankful for the gesture, Reptile, following her orders, agreed to find and attack Cyrax. 
Without any explanation, he was ordered to damage Cyrax's arm panel. Another piece of Natara's plot to gain Cyrax's help. Reptile attacked Cyrax and he was successful. Throughout the events of Deadly Alliance, Raiden and his forces attacked Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. Reptile mostly remained outside the conflict, but he eventually realized that Natara was manipulating him. It was her fault that he couldn't warn Shao Kahn in time, and Reptile decided to take revenge. He began tracking her, and followed her trail to the lava shrine inside a volcano, where outworld priests worshipped Onaka, and protected what was considered the last dragon egg. When Reptile arrived, Natara was already gone. Instead, he found the dragon egg, a moment that would change his destiny. Despite the strong sulfur stench that filled the chamber, Reptile could smell that Natara and Cyrax had been there recently. There was no sign of them now, except for some scattered glass shards and a residual trace of strong magical energies. His revenge would have to wait. Suddenly, an expected hush filled the chamber as energy cascaded around what appeared to be a dragon embryo. The tiny dragon stretched and the egg cracked. A beam of energy ripped out from inside and lanced into Reptile. His world was filled with a roaring power as his squamous body was twisted and transformed. The ancient prophecy had been fulfilled. The Dragon King had returned. The warrior Shijinko was manipulated into granting Onaga the power to resurrect himself, and his energy burst from the Dragon Egg. When the energy blast hit Reptile, the soul of the Dragon King entered him, and Reptile's body began twisting and changing. The end result was the resurrection of Onaga, re-entering the realm of Outworld through the body of Reptile, transformed to regain his original physical appearance. For the time being, Reptile was no more, until Onaga was defeated by Shijinko and Nightwolf placed spiritual chains to keep him contained, unknowingly saving Reptile in the process. After Onaga was defeated, Reptile was separated from his body and reverted back to an earlier, more humanoid state. Reptile was tired of being used as a pawn, and he was determined to restore his race of Zaterans. During the events of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, the half-god Taven was on a quest through the realms, attempting to find a way to stop Armageddon. The fabric of the realms was coming undone, and the only possible way he believed to stop it was to challenge the elemental blaze and claim its power to alter reality. During Taven's quest, he came across the lair of the Red Dragon Clan where they held the captured dragon guardian of Edenia, Karo. Reptile was also willingly there in an attempt to use science to restore the Zaterans. But instead of resurrecting his race, the Red Dragon Clan were using Karo and Reptile's DNA to create human-dragon hybrids. Close the portal, dragon. I command you. Karo! Get away from him, lizard! I am Reptile, and I do not answer to you. Fight! Reptile was defeated by Taven and he abandoned the Red Dragon Clan base. His final chance to restore the Zaterans was found with Shinnok and the Army of Darkness he raised to claim the power of Blaze. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat Armageddon ending, Reptile accomplished his goal by finding a mate. <laughs> As the shockwave caused by Blaze's death rattled the surrounding crater, the pyramid on which Reptile stood began to crumble. A fissure opened to reveal a sarcophagus of familiar design. Reptile unlocked the curious artifact to find a female Zaterran. As she awoke, Reptile felt himself slowly reverting back to his humanoid form. The glory of Zatera will return once more. The Chameleons also joined the Battle of Armageddon. The female Chameleon was determined to gain revenge against Shao Kahn for what he did to Zatera. Before the battle, she approached Reptile and he agreed to join forces with her in an attempt to destroy Shao Kahn. But Reptile was easily swayed by Kahn and he betrayed Chameleon. She barely escaped with her life and lost hope that the Emperor would ever truly pay for his crimes. Chameleon wandered the realms and spied on various combatants while camouflaged. 
She learned what Blaze's power was capable of and that Shao Kahn desired it. Then she was determined to claim it for herself and use it against him. In her non-canon Armageddon ending, Chameleon became all-powerful and restored the Zaterans in an unexpected manner. Drinking in the power of Blaze, Chameleon's eyes glowed as she focused her wrath on Shao Kahn. The Emperor would finally pay for destroying Zatira, and so too with those who served him. The pain he endured during his transformation was excruciating, and Shao Kahn, for the first time in his life, pleaded for mercy. She granted him none. Chameleon's power transformed Shao Kahn into a raptor, powerful like her, but subservient to her wishes. She then turned her attention to his allies, and they too were transformed. But she lost control of her newfound power, and mistakenly mutated the forces of light as well. Chameleon now had at her command an army of powerful raptor warriors. The might of Zatira had finally returned. The male chameleon was also a part of the Battle of Armageddon. He chose to join Shinnok's Army of Darkness, but his reasons were more selfish. He had no interest in restoring the Zaterans. In his non-canon Armageddon ending, he revealed that he'd been watching the combatants for a long time and simply wanted the glory of being champion. As the battle raged, Chameleon camouflaged himself and raced to the top of the pyramid unseen. There he defeated Blaze and the ethereal power overtook him. Immortality was now his. Though he had been ever present throughout the crises of the realms, from Liu Kang's first victory to the return of the Dragon King, he had remained hidden from sight, waiting for his moment to come. That moment had arrived. From this day forth, the realms will know Chameleon as the true champion of mortal combat. In the canon version of events, Reptile and both Chameleons were killed in combat, and Shao Kahn fought Raiden until the end. Kahn claimed the power of Blaze, and right before he was about to rewrite the universe in his image, Raiden used his amulet to send a message warning his younger self of Kahn's victory. A message to the past that created an alternate history, where Reptile would have another chance at finding his people. He must win. In this new history, the Chameleons remain completely hidden and unknown. Reptile had a similar history, with the exception of some Zaterans remaining as slaves. In this world, he was the last known survivor of Shao Kahn's merger of Zatera, and he survived by becoming loyal to Shao Kahn, uncovering traitors to Kahn's empire and protecting its leaders. But Reptile's inner loyalty was to his lost people. If given the chance, he'd betray anyone, do anything to restore his realm. For now, he was a simple servant and guardian, wallowing in self-pity and aggression. Instead of remaining hidden as Shang Tsung's guardian, this time he participated in the 10th Earthrealm tournament as the first Outworld combatant. Johnny Cage wins. He got caged. That's it. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm so pretty. Johnny Cage defeated Reptile in their first match, and Outworld's losses continued, until Shang Tsung was defeated by Liu Kang. Reptile and Shang Tsung both returned to Outworld, ashamed and dreading what Shao Kahn would do to them for their failures. Shang Tsung was threatened with execution until he proposed another tournament held in Outworld, and Reptile was thrown into the caves, no longer welcome in the Emperor's presence. He would simply be kept as a pet in Shao Kahn's fortress. But Reptile understood what this really meant. He was living on borrowed time 
and Shao Kahn sent one of his military leaders, General Kotal, to finish Reptile while he slept. But Kotal was a man of honor, and he chose to spare Reptile's life, instead taking pity on him and requested that Reptile be placed under his direct command. Khan agreed and Reptile bowed to his new commander, though he was still primarily loyal to Shao Kahn and still acted as a guardian for Shang Tsung. As the tournament in Outworld was starting, Reptile notified Shang Tsung that the Black Dragon mercenary Kano arrived with Earthrealm weapons for Khan's army. Shang Tsung and Reptile met with Kano in secret until the group was discovered by the Earthrealm Lin Kuei, Smoke, who was searching for the killer of the original Sub-Zero. Tell me what you know of Sub-Zero's death. <laughs> What? Despite his failure at my tournament, I'll wager he was more powerful than you, Lin Kuei. Assuming his form will not give you his skill, shapeshifter. Stay down. Wins. Now answer me. What do you know of Sub-Zero? Reptile and Shang Tsung escape for now and join the tournament against Earthrealm for a final claim over the realm. In the final rounds, Reptile fought against Sub-Zero directly in front of his Emperor. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 9 ending, Reptile defeated his opponents and turned against Shao Kahn, then forced Shang Tsung to develop a solution to restore his people. <laughs> Having defeated Shao Kahn, Reptile was feared by all. He forced Shang Tsung to regenerate his raptor race. The process took agonizing months, but soon Reptile heard the snarls of young broodlings throughout the flesh pits. Eventually, Shang Tsung had created an army of raptor warriors bred to serve Reptile. They stormed the realm killing any Tarkatan, Shokan, or Centaur who opposed Reptile's rule. The intoxicating feeling of reuniting with his people blinded Reptile to the suffering of his former comrades. Reptile was home once more. In the canon version of events, Reptile was firmly defeated by Sub-Zero, and he witnessed Shao Kahn lose to Liu Kang with a fist through his chest. Thanks to dark magic, Shao Kahn survived and recovered with a vendetta against Earthrealm. He was convinced by Quan Chi to launch a direct invasion against Earthrealm and forsake the rules of Mortal Kombat. Khan agreed and launched the invasion with an army of monsters. A reptile served within its ranks and encountered police officers Cabal and Curtis Stryker. What is that? I'm thinking shoot first, ask questions later. Fine with me. You and me, freak show. Busted. <laughs> Spitting, sticking out your tongue. Reptile suffered yet another loss, knocked out cold by Stryker. He remained on the sidelines for the rest of the invasion and Shao Kahn was defeated by Raiden, sent to the Elder Gods for punishment. Prior to the events of Mortal Kombat X, Outworld was in a state of constant chaos after Shao Kahn's defeat. Reptile escaped back to his home and befriended the man that once spared his life, Kotal, and he remained at his side. Melina had taken over Outworld, claiming to be the rightful heir of Khan's empire, but her rule was inefficient and violent. Kotal desired to challenge her and remove her from the throne. He confronted Melina and claimed that Outworld desired new leadership. In a fit of rage, she attacked Kotal, and Reptile proved his loyalty by jumping in the way and taking the hit. Melina escaped, and Reptile survived the injury. When the time came to remove her, Reptile aided Kotal and his allies. Listen, and join us. 
I know things about Melina. Her troubled rule will fall in the telling and pave the way for Quatal. What would you know that... There they are. Three of your fellow counselors, whispering like handmaidens. About what, I wonder? If only you would hear our counsel. Speak your last, before I have your tongue. You are not Shao Kahn's true heir. She is a construct, formed in Shang Tsung's flesh pits. I saw this. Your best claim to the throne is moot. How dare you! I succeed Shao Kahn by his decree! Kill him! <laughs> ah! You will defend your empress! Our creator Shao Kahn is dead. We will serve whom we choose. <laughs> <laughs> Reptile assisted in the removal of Melina, and Kotal was crowned Khan of Outworld. But although Outworld now had a new ruler, Melina wouldn't let the throne go so easily. She formed her own group of rebels, and Outworld fell into a civil war. Kotal Khan swore to hunt down and destroy Melina and all her co-conspirators. Prince Goro and the Shokan also stood against Kotal's rule, and Reptile fiercely fought for his emperor, often using his camouflage to provide intel on enemy activities, and participated in several battles for the fate of Outworld. During the conflict, Johnny Cage and Sonya's daughter Cassie and Jax's daughter Jackie Briggs went missing. They were captured and taken to Outworld by the Black Dragon Clan, then the Red Dragon Clan. Sonya, Johnny, and the Special Forces entered Outworld in search for them and confronted Kotal Khan for answers. Reptile was insulted that Sonya was falsely accusing them for being responsible, and he attacked her for injuring Kotal Khan. Johnny stopped the fight and kept heads calm, and Reptile joined in the search for the girls at Kotal's request. He discovered that Aaron Black had concocted the plot to kidnap them. They were taken to Shang Tsung's old island in a plot by the Cleric of Chaos Realm Havoc, who corrupted daggers known as the Kamidogu needed to release the Elder God of Death Shinnok. He used his blood magic to control several warriors, including the missing girls. Reptile participated in the final battle against the corrupted combatants and almost lost his life to an attack by Molina, but Scorpion defeated Havoc by removing his head. The effects of the blood magic wore off and Reptile recovered from his injuries, ending the crisis. During the events of Mortal Kombat X, Shinnok was threatening to return. Reptile was assisting an Outworld investigation into Devora, now a traitor loyal to Shinnok and Cassie Cage led a special forces team into Outworld to investigate the whereabouts of Shinnok's amulet, where he was imprisoned, and misunderstandings led to confrontations. Question is, is she working with anyone else? What is it? Damn, he's made us the Earthrealmers. Devora freed them. After the confrontation, Reptile reported back to Kotal Khan, and they were convinced the Earthrealmers were working with Devora. Kotal ordered his armies to gather and travel into Earthrealm to reclaim the amulet, and Reptile joined the search. In Earthrealm, Shinnok had already been released, and he was working to spread his corruption through the realm. Before Cassie and her special forces could explain, another confrontation with Reptile and Kotal's forces occurred. Jackie, look out! Uh, 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 
Go crawl back under your rock, reptile. Sub-Zero and the Lin Kuei stopped the battle, and Coldal's forces retreated back into Outworld. Soon after, Shinnok was defeated by Cassie Cage, and Shinnok was sent back into Earthrealm as a spy to assess the aftermath, where he made a shocking discovery. After Shinnok's defeat, Reptile was ordered to Earthrealm by Kotal Khan to assess the damage. Such intel could prove useful in future conflicts. Stumbling upon a collapsed cavern, exposed during the crisis, Reptile was shocked to see raptors emerging from within. Unlike the rest of his race, these raptors had never left Earthrealm for the doomed realm of Zaterra, and thus had remained safe and hidden. Alone no more, Reptile vowed to remain with his rediscovered people and reclaim their Earthrealm homeland. In a likely canon ending, he decided to stay with his people in this new Zaterra, the home he'd been searching for for so long. He left behind conflict, he left behind Outworld, he left behind servitude. Sizoth was home. During the events of Mortal Kombat 11, Shinnok's mother, the titan responsible for the flow of time, Kronika, sought to create a perfect timeline and began a plot to reset history. She'd done it before countless times, going mad with power, in infinite attempts to adjust changes all over history, in order to create one where Raiden and Liu Kang wouldn't interfere with her plans. Since Reptile remained hidden in Earthrealm with his people, he wasn't involved in the conflict. Although he does have some small appearances in the crypt, in the end of the story, Kronika was defeated. Liu Kang became a fire god, Liu Kang and Shang Tsung battled for the right to recreate history, and ultimately Liu Kang was victorious, resetting the universe to its beginnings and creating Creating a new era. Having liberated the hourglass and become keeper of time, my next task was to restart history. events. I was free to craft a new era. It was with humility and restraint that I approached this blank canvas. After careful preparation, I began work, painting for the darkness. After eons passed, I sketched out the realms. After eons more, I brushed them in with life. In my new era, all beings will have the opportunity to find peace. Whether or not they do, will be their responsibility. Liu Kang had crafted a new timeline with a new history never before seen. In Liu Kang's new era, Outworld was a united realm made of many lands. Under the rule of Queen Sindel and her two daughters, Melina and Katana, there were no forced invasions by Shao Kahn, no forced mergers of realms earned via Mortal Kombat. This time, the tournament was used as competition to keep some of the more power-hungry elements in the realms at bay. There were still conflicts, but the realms were mostly peaceful. Liu Kang had written a history that made the realm's greatest villains powerless, doomed to live normal, uneventful lives. In this new history, Zatera was never taken over and destroyed by Khan. Its inhabitants were alive and totally in reptilian form, but they lived on the fringes of Outworld and kept to themselves, viewed as being too different from the Outworlders, Outworlders that they called Warmbloods. Reptile, the Zatera known as Sizoth, was different from his people though. His human form was a mutation in his biology that allowed him to completely shapeshift between his natural, Zatera in form and human form at will. 
For this, he was considered an outcast and terrorized by the rest of the Zaterans. He was run out of his home and left with his family to the outworld lands governed by Queen Sindel's empire. The male chameleon, as of the making of this video, hasn't made an appearance in the new era yet, but female chameleon has. Instead of a secret Zaterran hiding in the shadows, plotting to take revenge against Shao Kahn, she's part of the Ongadi, the royal family's defense force consisting of specially trained warrior priestesses. Although she doesn't play a major role in the story, she is present during its events and became a usable cameo character. In the new era, Shang Tsung wasn't an evil sorcerer. Yet, he was a traveling merchant selling snake oil, a huckster that struggled to make a living, with no hope of bettering his life. Eventually, a stranger appeared to him and informed him of the power that was stolen from him. As he began learning sorcery and growing closer to the royal family, Shang Tsung came across Reptile. The reptile had joined a traveling circus, and Shang Tsung was amazed by his ability to morph into a human. He took Reptile's family hostage and forced him to teach him the secrets of shapeshifting, and Shang Tsung learned how to transform into different people. From there, Shang Tsung began horrific experimentation on living subjects right under the nose of Queen Sindel, and he forced Reptile to become his lab's guard. If Reptile refused, his family would pay the price. During the events of Mortal Kombat 1, Liu Kang befriended many of his fellow warriors from the previous era, and began investigating how Shang Tsung and other threats to Outworld were regaining abilities they never should have had. Johnny Cage, Baraka, and a newly blinded Kenshi were discovered and taken prisoner, and Reptile reluctantly protected Shang Tsung's lab. Once the group escaped, he was forced to fight against them, yet failure would cost him everything. I'm ruined! Shang Tsung will punish me for this by torturing my family! You'll pay for their suffering, Takatin! Fight! We are leaving. Then kill me. If I die, maybe he'll spare my family. No, I won't murder you. It's mercy, not murder. Not that what I've done deserves yours. You were protecting your family. I would have done the same. What has happened here? Sizoth, you fool! You've let them ruin everything. We're going, sorcerer! And we're taking you with us. Liu Kang would like a word. I cannot be apprehended so easily. And I, Magna King! Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I bid you all farewell. Cheer up, Sizoth. I'm reuniting you with your family. They're dead! You killed them! Many moons ago. I do hate loose ends. We gotta get out of here. Shang Tsung had lied. Reptile's family was already dead killed long ago, leaving Sizoth alone and distraught. He decided from then on to join his new allies and inform them that Shang Tsung was conspiring with others, including Rain and Shao Kahn, now General Shao, to take Outworld's throne by force. While traveling back to Earthrealm to inform Liu Kang of their findings, the group encountered Ashra in the Living Forest, a demon from the Netherrealm attempting to leave a dark legacy behind. She thought Reptile and Baraka were demons and attacked before the group discovered that Quan Chi was also regaining his abilities and building soul stealers to harness power for Shang Tsung. Quan Chi sends more demons? Wait, they're not! If not demons, what are you? He's a Terran. I am a Denian. Or I was before my Tarkat affliction. Outworlders? Apologies. I'm glad I've caused neither of you permanent injury.
What dark magic is this? We are Ermac. A collection of souls bound by Quan Chi's magic. Ready to go! Quan Chi and his allies escaped, but the royal family had to be warned. In Outworld, a festival was going on where Princess Katana and Princess Melina were in attendance. Sizoth was stealthily using his camouflage in an effort to remain hidden, but he was spotted and recognized by General Xiao. The general couldn't afford to have anyone reveal his plans for rebellion, and Li Mei, ever loyal to the royal family, confronted Reptile. As a Terran wasn't so easily trusted in Outworld, many hadn't even seen one before, considering they stayed to themselves in the outskirts of Outworld. Reptile had no intention of hurting anyone, but he was forced to defend himself while the others searched for a way to escape back in Earthrealm. <laughs> I'll get him. Green blood? You're Zaterran. How can you- There is much you don't know. Like what the general is truly up to. Surrender and I'll hear you out. I can't if you resist arrest. You arrest me, he'll execute me. And that's not how I intend to die. Fart! Know that I am sorry for disturbing Sundo's peace. Insurrection from a Zaterran? This is a day I never thought I'd see. You misread my intentions, Princess. Sadly, I've no time to explain them. Soon, you will know the truth. Take the princess and go. My fight's not with her, or you. It is now that you've laid your hands on her. I will take your life as punishment. My sentence is suspended, Umgadi. It's unlike Shang Tsung to leave loose ends. Now that I'm free of him, I'll reveal your conspiracy to all of Outworld. <laughs> You'll do nothing of the kind. Dead men tell no tales. You won't silence me, General. After the battle was over, Sizoth joined his allies to inform Liu Kang of everything they'd learned, and the God of Fire recognized him. Liu Kang found much to be worried about surrounding the events that were occurring. Someone was unraveling the changes he made to keep history from repeating itself. Eventually, it was revealed that Liu Kang wasn't the only winner in his Mortal Kombat 11 battle against Shang Tsung for control of time. Their battle had released a massive amount of energy that split reality into a second timeline, one in which Shang Tsung became a titan and won the battle. He recreated history in his own image and eons past before he realized that another timeline existed, a timeline in which Liu Kang had defeated him. Titan Shang Tsung traveled into it and disguised himself as Kronika to manipulate events within Liu Kang's timeline. His actions kept Liu Kang distracted while Titan Shang Tsung searched for the location of Kronika's hourglass. Liu Kang's new era posed a threat and he would destroy the entire timeline. However, both Liu Kang and Shang Tsung were shocked to learn that not only were there two timelines, the battle affected all of reality with an infinite amount of possibilities. There was a massive multiverse of universes, all with the unlikeliest of combatants imbued with control of time, even one where Reptile controlled history. In the end of Mortal Kombat 1, a new battle of Armageddon resulted. Liu Kang led an army of titans from across the multiverse into Shang Tsung's timeline, and Shang Tsung had built a dark army of his own. The clash was titanic, but ultimately Reptile helped contribute to its outcome.
Thank you. Assist me, Quan Chi. Thanks to the help of the Multiverse Titans, Liu Kang was able to defeat Titan Shang Tsung and a Quan Chi from another universe. Liu Kang evacuated his allies before Titan Shang Tsung's timeline collapsed. Titan Reptile returned to his own universe. One threat was gone, but threats from other universes were now a very real possibility. Liu Kang began working to erect barriers between timelines, and Reptile continued building relationships with his allies. Now, new friends, and especially a romantic relation with Ashra. Both of them consider outsiders to their own people. And Reptile also developed a new fear after Johnny Cage introduced him to the movie Predator. I did not see you and Ashra coming. Oh, kudos, sir. What are kudos, Johnny? The Gateway. Why did you show me that Predator film? <laughs> uh, after what we've been through, that was scary. But most importantly, Reptile was now welcomed within Outworld. Melina was crowned queen after the death of Sindel, and she attempted to unite people from all over Outworld and rule them fairly. Sizoth became emissary to his people and discovered an awful truth. He wasn't the only Zaterran mistreated by his own people. After fleeing Outworld, I hadn't expected to return. But then I also hadn't expected the new Empress to make me an offer I couldn't refuse. To thank me for helping stop General Shao's rebellion, she asked me to be her emissary to the Zaterans. Going home, bearing the seal of the royal house, I would show once and for all, that my mutation wasn't to be feared. That it wasn't a source of shame. To my surprise, I was welcomed. But those warm smiles hid a dark secret. I stumbled upon a trove of official records which showed that my shape-shifting ability isn't unique. Many Saterans are born with it, but are killed by their government to keep it from spreading. Who started this barbaric policy? Who is now enforcing it is unknown. But I will find out. And I will put an end to this madness. And that is, as of now, the updated history of Reptile and the Chameleons. How will Reptile handle the secret of the Zaterran mutants? And what role will it play in the future of the new era? Leave me your opinions in the comment section below, and I will see you guys next video.